Hi, and welcome to Text Nation TV this week. Uh, we have a special guest. My name is Rusty G. Obviously, you know me, but I want to introduce, we're sitting down with Todd Oney, who is, and I'm going to hopefully get this correct, Power System Communications Specialist under System Protection and Communications, a.k.a. the Fiber Guy. And how are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Appreciate being on the show today. Ah, thank you for having us and uh, letting us talk to you. We want to kind of ask a couple questions. Uh, we found out recently that Nashville actually has fiber here in Nashville. For some of our viewers, they know what that is. Uh, they've heard of Google City, Kansas, out in Kansas City, Chattanooga, sure. down the road from us. Um, but some people don't know what fiber is. Can you give us just a background on what fiber is and you know, kind of give us just a quick bit of somebody that looking to understand what fiber is? Sure, fiber is basically the communications medium for uh, information today. Basically, it's the backbone of the internet, uh, all the, the different communication mediums out there. It is the, it, it's basically replaced copper as the communications medium out there, uh, right. at least for large data traffic. So, the folks that are watching on YouTube and in different places, it's all coming, all this is coming over the internet via fiber optic cable. Okay. So we've got fiber optic cable that goes out to a certain point because when I looked at it, uh, NES, uh, the company that you work for, our local uh, electric company, um, they, they have a point where fiber stops. Um, fiber goes out to a certain point and then at that point I believe uh, other companies may take over from that. Is, is that kind of like a, I guess an end point for them is once your stops they may continue from there or you know, are you guys building out for that or what's, what's kind of going on there? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a history of our fiber network, and, and then I'm going to help explain it a little bit. We actually started putting fiber in back in the mid-90s on some pilot programs, and mainly for our own internal communications uh, from the electric center here on Church Street to our different substations around the city for communications with our substations, uh, command and control of the power system. So that was really our original focus, uh, more our own internal needs for fiber rather than doing anything else with it on a, on a commercial basis. Uh, we slowly rolled all of our substation communications over to fiber optic cable. So we really deployed our network for our own internal use. Then as we started deploying our network, we had people approach us saying, hey, we know, we, we've heard you got some fiber. We, we'd like to use some of that if we could. Right. And uh, it started developing from there as far as leasing out our spare capacity to other folks. So. Uh, our fiber was designed more for our own internal purposes, how we needed it, and then we've since kind of grown it uh, for other people as they have needs for it. Um, but basically, it's for our internal communications is how our, our network was designed. So I'm going to ask a super nerdy question because yes. I, I always think about this. When you say command and control center and things like that, I right. immediately think the Batcave or, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the... Fortress of Solitude for Superman, you know, right. a super center for you know control of everything, right. whatever it is that is going on. So, do you guys have one room that is able to see all of this network traffic, and you're able to see? Um, because I, I I know of a company, Riverbed, who does a lot of network, um, you know, scaling and things like that for you to be able to see, you know, how network traffic goes, you know, to and from, who's using the most, what server, what you know, is right. there you know a particular company for that? Or do you guys have a room that someone can sit in? and go, all right, we've got a lot of traffic coming from blah, 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 and they might send out a warning or something like that or you know anything like that? We do actually have a room here. It's, uh, we call it SCADA, which is short for System Control and Data Acquisition. But it is a big, I guess, maybe war room if you want to call it that, or Fortress of Solitude or the Bat Cave. <laughs> and there's all these TV screens up there, these huge monitors and control desks and everything else. And it's really for the power system. And, and we use the fiber optic cable that we have for, uh, to bring back information on the, the system, where we have outages, um, you know, maybe if a transformer is, is broken or something and they need to replace it or poles or whatever, we have a large scale customer outage, all that information will come back over there and they'll be able to see that and dispatch crews to it. So we do, we do have the, uh, the back cave, I guess. That is awesome. I would love yeah. to see that. Uh, I'm sure that that's a super secret place and yeah. only, you know, five people are allowed in that room. So. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely kind of cool. Um, with that, you guys, it sounds like you probably have a 24-hour service that allows, you know, hey, like you said, the light pole down or whatever, because I know that whenever we call in as a customer, right. uh, most of the time, uh, if I call for a power outage, 
when I call in, the computer automatically goes, we already know of a service outage in such and such area and things like that. Um, now, does it send out alerts to the crews immediately? Is there like a five minute delay? What, what's kind of, because you said it goes out to the, you know, for dispatch. So what's the, what's, what's kind of the process there? Let's say, you know, for, let's just say for all intents and purposes, uh, somewhere in Madison, you know, that's just on the, just on the line of being inside Davidson County, but not, you know, outside. Sure. Let's say we get something that goes down in Madison. Mm -hmm. um, what would be kind of be a process as to what happens? The process would be if, if it's something that we notice or a customer calls in and says, hey, I've got lights out or whatever else, it will go to the, the, the SCADA Center or the Bat Cave. Right. And they'll investigate it, see what's going on, and then they will dispatch a crew from there. They will identify the closest crew. We have um, you know, vehicle locators in, in all our trucks to where they know where the, the trucks are at all times and the crews that are out. So they'll, they'll find the closest crew that's available and dispatch them to that location to address whatever problem is. What's a typical time frame on something like that? From either point of customer calling or the system notifying you, what's a typical everyday you know, dispatch time, do you, do you know? You know, it really depends on, on the time of day just because, you know, obviously we have more crews out during the day, but they're also usually working our typical system maintenance, those type of things. So, uh, you know, it may take a little bit of time you know, to get somebody out there, uh, you know, versus nighttime maybe where, you know, we've got crews out that are rovers that are able to respond. So it really just depends on, on time of day and workload of crews. Okay. So let's bring it back to fiber, what, yes. what we originally want to talk about. Right. Um, you and I had conversed back and forth about what the fiber is used for. And right. like I said, we've kind of got it now, you know, uh, we've got a map uh, of what that fiber is connected to, how far it goes out, what areas and towns like that. So right. um, my question is, when that fiber is being used, right. um, before I get to who's using it, let's let's say what else is it being used for besides your own internals, you know, for you guys, uh, what else is it being used for? Because there's total, uh, an infinite amount of things that it could be used for, but what's some of the main things that it's being used for? Well, obviously, like I said, our, our, our primary use is, is our, our internal needs, but then we also, um, lease out those strands and our customers that use those strands of fiber, individual strands of fiber, use it for video streaming, for uh, backup connections to, to disaster recovery sites, uh, to offer telecommunication services, video streaming, uh, cellular backhaul, uh, I mean really any, any telecommunications need, data need, you could just about think of, our customers are using it for that purpose. So I'm going to ask a sneaky question, yes. and, I, and I don't know as far as what companies can and can't and what you can and can't say, sure. but um, you said sell. Um, yes. That first thing that pops into my mind uh, is Verizon and AT&T. Does right. Verizon and AT&T use any of that for any of their backhaul for helping out with their cell towers? Uh, AT&T has their own networks here in town, so they pretty much use theirs, and Verizon uh, uses fiber for that as well. Right. So. Let me ask you this. You, you said that you lease these things out and stuff like that. Right. Let's say that our show wanted to create our own cell network. And, right. let's, and let's say that uh, we had the money and the backing to create a cell, um, uh, a regional cell phone company, sure. kind of like Metro PCS or something like that, yeah. where we start out in just one town and then right. maybe out to, you know, whatever. Because I, I believe Cricket started out that way as, you know, being a hometown for, you know, I forget where it started out at, but right. stuff like that. Let's say I wanted to create a Nashville-based cell phone company. Right. Uh, kind of give us some steps as to what we would need to get to to be a part of that NES you know, fiber. As far as using the fiber goes, you would have tower locations where you would place your equipment for cell phones to connect to. But the big piece that people kind of fail to realize with technology nowadays is you've got to have some way to transport that cell phone call or that data that you're receiving from that cell tower back to an office someplace, back to a central, central site that will then route your call or your data or whatever else or send your text message out to wherever it's going to go. Right. All the carriers here in town have a location like that. Uh, the fiber would be used to go from that cell tower back to that location. Now, used to... Companies could use copper for that because right. primarily you were using just phone, you were just using the phone portion of it. You weren't using any kind of data or anything else that required large bandwidth. Right. Now, obviously, 
you know, Verizon's got 27 megs, you know, download to your to your 4G phone. I, I haven't, I, at least that's what I've seen on speed test locally. I'm not sure what uh, AT and T and Sprint, some of the others do, but you know, you're not going to get 27 megs of speed over copper. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. So you've got to have that fiber connectivity from your cell tower back to your office. So if you all started a, a, a you know, Nashville phone or Nashville cell, yeah. uh, you could use our fiber to connect from the cell tower back to whatever office okay. that you had here in town. Okay, so, and, and this has kind of a, been a, a burning question for me, and, and I think I asked you this pro, uh, prior to in emails. Yeah. Um, I was talking, obviously, uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Right. Uh, Google is doing their fiber there. Right. Um, even closer to us is Bristol, Tennessee. Right. Their local electric company is now doing consumer-based fiber that someone can, you know, pay a monthly fee for. Right. Uh, and even Chattanooga, Tennessee with EPB, they're doing their electric. Um, and I, I think you had said that you guys do not do anything consumer-based, but more business-based. It's more B2B for you guys. Um, what kind of uh, incentive does the fact that Bristol, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee, close, and then Google's, uh, Google's Kansas City, I, I, we constantly say on the show, Google City, Kansas, but yes. Kansas City. <laughs> Uh, is there anything in the future that maybe that's something that could happen, or is that you know something that just we're going to stick with uh, letting businesses do their thing with it and go from there? Uh, for right now, we're going to stick with letting businesses do their thing and go with it from there. And part of the th thing you see with like Chattanooga and especially Bristol with those two markets is that they weren't really being very well served by their local utilities as far as <laughs> the phone company and the cable company. They weren't yeah. really offering them much of a, a choice in, in internet services. So that's kind of what spurred those. Whereas here we've got AT&T and Comcast both offering you know, higher speed services. As I mentioned, Verizon Wireless, you're getting 27 megs on your phone, which right. I mean is, is ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, that's what kind of spurred some of those communities to do that. Not saying that we wouldn't do that here. We actually were approached at one point about somebody interested in leasing our fiber to offer uh, services to residential customers, but it just didn't materialize for right. one reason or the other. So, uh, I mean, if someone wanted to use our fiber for that purpose, that's certainly something we could do. But as far as NES offering that service, right now we don't have immediate plans for that. All right, so we've asked all sorts of questions, things like that. Sure. Um, the next kind of thing that we wanted to ask is we've talked about you know, the history of it as far as you guys getting started and right. some of these companies giving services and things like that. Uh, and we've talked about, you know, uh, could we come up with something? That's something that's viable. Um, but as far as what is fiber, we've given a definition, but let's, let's talk about physically what is fiber because some people, again, you know, they don't know the difference between their power plug and, and you know, the, adapt, the adapters that go with it. So sure. let's, let's talk about what is fiber. And you've brought, it, brought along something to kind of show us, so right. kind of give us an idea. This is actually a sample of fiber. This is a fiber optic cable, and actually in this fiber optic cable, as tiny as this is, there are actually 60 strands of fiber optics Wow. strands in this cable, and they are broken down into groups of 12. Each one of these little buffer tubes here has 12, 12 strands of fiber in it, and then they are further color-coded by the individual strands, like fiber one is blue, fiber two is orange, they're broken down uh, into little different color groups. And actually, I don't know how well that's showing up, but yeah. this, this actually isn't even a piece of fiber right here. This is actually the fiber with the coating on it. Wow. So you actually strip that coating off, and that's how thin the fiber is. That is super, super thin. We're talking, yes, it, it looks very uh, human hairish. It's smaller than human hair, yes. So it's, uh, it's very small, but can carry a tremendous amount of data. Right now, uh, we still haven't maxed out the amount of data we can send over a fiber optic strand. Wow. We, uh, we think the theoretical limit is about 50 terabits per second wow. of data. Right now, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the largest system I've seen deployed is like an 8 terabit system. And uh, that's usually reserved for stuff like submarine, you know, transatlantic, transpacific cables, uh, just because you're talking a tremendous cost with those th that type of equipment, uh, obviously. So with uh, a submarine cable, you've, you've got a limited strand, the limited strand, so you want to yeah. make sure you get the most bang for your buck. But, uh, um, you know, that, 
we still haven't maxed out how much data we can transmit over fiber yet because of the equipment that connects to the fiber. Right. So let's talk about that. Um, right. We were talking earlier, you know, it being better than uh, coax or better than cable or even better than satellite. Right. So what's, what's the benefits of having fiber versus any of the others? Well, several benefits to fiber over, over all those different mediums. The biggest thing for us, for NES, why we went with this is because of no interference on the cable. This is just pure, the, the strand itself is pure optical glass, meaning it's not conducted, it doesn't conduct electricity, uh, it prevents any kind of interference. Uh, I'm sure at some point someone may have been on the phone, you know, telephone, landline phone, and heard, <laughs> yeah, heard crunching, or maybe even heard crosstalk or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you don't get that with fiber. It's just not conductive. It's only tra lights only traveling over it. Um, non, you know, conductive. Again, we still haven't reached the limit as far as how much information you can push over a single strand of fiber. Whereas, with copper and coax and satellite, there are there are currently defined limits on how much information you can physically carry over that that medium. You know, I think Comcast is up to 105 megabits per second over their coax of the home, but you know, with fiber, you're talking easily a 100 gig system that you can deploy and, and carry. So, um, you know, the, the amount of data you can you can transmit over this is just, you know, it's exponentially greater than any other medium right now. So you say right now that the most you've seen is maybe eight terabits a second, you right. know, for that uh, whatever that system may be. Um, right. And do you see with uh, technology booming, and it has been for the last five years. Right. I, I would say uh, with the development of the iPhone in 2007 uh, and smartphones, you know, right. ever since then, basically data has been through the roof. You know, sure. that's what everybody complains about right now is, you know, do I go to Sprint and pay for unlimited? Right. But you know, is their service the best? Probably not. Um, do I go to you know Cricket or do I go to Boost Mobile and pay? A, a, you know, a monthly thing where, sure. you know, you pay for a certain amount that's unlimited, but there's a slower, right. do I go through and, you know, go to Comcast, do what, you know, things like that. Um, do you see in the next five years that maybe you might find someone that will use that, you know, full extent of what's capable within that fiber? Do you, do you see that in the near future? Is there anything in development that you could see, you know, using a, a, lo a large amount of data? Or, you know, do you think it's going to be fiber is going to be here for 10, 15 years before we ever each, you know, reach the max limit? You know, I think in, in the next five to ten years, I think you may see something develop on a national basis where people will start developing fiber more for the residential use. Really kind of the biggest hindrance to that right now is AT&T and Verizon and Comcast have dumped billions of dollars over the years into their copper networks or their, their coax networks. And they want to get the maximum return on investment for that. So they're going to try and prolong the life of those networks as long as they can. But eventually, I think you will see more and more communities and different carriers step up and start developing fiber networks to the resident, residential market just because there is a, a demand there. I think as more and more people start doing video on demand and want to do distance learning and, and telemedicine and, and different applications, you're going to see more and more fiber deployed and more and more use of that down to the consumer level at the house. All right, so we're, we've talked about all this st stuff like that, and I, what I want to ask next is, do you see fiber in the next five to ten years being at every single doorstep, you know, n not just Nashville, but nationwide? Is that something that's, because our president currently is pushing for, you know, broadband to the door for everybody to have, and they, right. he basically wants it to be with the lack of better words, an inalienable right for everyone to have access to. So in the next five, ten years, do you see something like that happening that, again, not just na Nashville, but nationwide, everyone having access to fiber? I see a much greater fiber deployment in the next five to ten years to the house. I don't know that we'll hit every household within the next five to ten years, uh, just because there's a lot of incumbent incumbents out there that currently have facilities in place. But I think you're seeing more and more communities get involved in that, like you mentioned. Bristol, uh, Chattanooga, Jackson, Tennessee also has a fiber plan, and you are seeing some other other companies out there that are deploying fiber networks, and also network wireless networks that are supported by fiber. So I think you'll see a greater development of that in the next five to ten years, but I don't know that you'll see it as ubiquitous as uh, we might hope.
All right, so we've talked about all this fiber, all this thing, companies using it, what it's good to use for, right. um, and possibly coming to the door. Let's talk about Nashville in specific. Right. Uh, NES is, I think it's called NES Net, I Correct. think is what it's called. Yes. Um, let's talk about the history of that and how that built. And, and I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Sure. Years ago, we saw AT&T laying these red, white, and blue tubes throughout throughout town, putting things like that, and you said that that's probably a separate network, correct? Correct. Okay, so they have nothing to do with that. That was just this curveball question. But sure. But kind of give us uh, technology, uh, the history of the technology that's here in Nashville. You know, tell us how that got started and things like that. Sure. As I mentioned, originally we put this the fiber optic system in for our own needs. Uh, we previously had communications out to our substations and different, uh, different devices out in the field through a copper cable. Uh, that was strung all around town, but eventually maintenance cost on that and some of the other uh, costs associated with it uh, really started to become a, an issue for us. Plus the fact, as I mentioned, with, with fiber, there's no interference, electrical interference, whereas uh, having a copper cable go into a substation that can conduct electricity, not the best solution. <laughs> so uh, we started some pilot programs back in the early 90s with fiber from the electric center out to some of our substations. We continue to develop that till now we have fiber, as I mentioned, that every substation, every major substation that we have, we have fiber. Um, and originally we uh, use that for some of the protection of the, of the electric system, communications up to our substation. We've since expanded that now to where we have our corporate uh, traffic going over it as far as email and those type of things, internally, uh, security video cameras out to the substations. So we've expanded what we've done with it. It's kind of like anything else. Once you have those facilities in place and you think, okay, well, wow, look, now here's something new I can do with this that we didn't necessarily intend to. So uh, we've expanded our network uh, substantially compared to what we originally started out with, uh, just the applications that we've done with it and then also um, you know, the scope of our network as well. So we've talked about the history of it and things like that, and I think we know everything about you know fiber at this point. Uh, so I want to kind of ask, uh, what kind of companies and what kind of applications have you seen that's kind of cool, you know, something that an end user is using it for? Sure. One of the uh, neat things, I think, we've got a couple different customers out there that are using our fiber for some different applications. With Nashville being an entertainment uh, venue, we've got a customer that has used our fiber to connect into the Nashville Symphony, and they awesome. are doing live streaming uh, from events at the Symphony. We've got another customer that has used our fiber to connect into Tootsie's Orchid Lounge and awesome. to do live streaming from Tootsie's. I like that. So uh, definitely a little Nashville flavor there. I mean, nothing like fiber to the honky tonk. So uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good application. But we've also got customers that have used it to connect into hotels, to offer uh, Wi-Fi in the hotels, to connect into some of the local TV stations, to offer uh, services uh, to the TV stations and for backhaul. So there's really a lot of different applications you can use the fiber for, s stuff other than just, hey, I need to get on the internet and look up some information. So Just your basic home user, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so in closing, uh, let's say uh, somebody's watching this and they have a business of their own that they'd like to tap into this NES sure. network. Um, tell us again your name and how we get in contact with you if someone wants to, you know, get it in on this network. Sure, it's Todd Oni. And you can go to a website we have. It's www.nesnetwork.com. On there, you can find a map of our network, where our fiber is. Uh, there's a pricing schedule on there as well if you're interested in leasing fiber. Um, talks a little bit about what you can do with it. Uh, also talks about some of the applications you can use it for. As I mentioned, there's some video testimonials from some customers on there. Um, and, and just a lot of good information, of course. People can also call me, 747-3836. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again very much for sitting down with us, taking time yeah. out of your day. And yeah. we'd love to, in the future, maybe five, ten years, come back and have another interview and say, sure. hey, you know, this is what we did five years ago. Right. What's it doing now? Things like that. So, sure. again, I appreciate great. it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, guys, make sure you also follow us online, textnation.tv. We've got facebook.com slash textnationtv, twitter.com slash textnationtv. You know it all at this point. Just... It's all right there. Follow us online. And again, if you want to get in touch with him, we will get you in touch with him. If you forget, it's Todd Oney. And again, 747-3836. That's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you.